Hey guys, it's Michelle with Blue Roof Cabin Upholstery and today I'm going to share tips on making French mattress cushions. So the first thing we do is we figure out what size to cut the foam and the fabric. Um, after experimenting with several different methods, I finally settled on just doing it the way I do a regular cushion. You don't need to add tons of Dacron or anything like that. Um, the stitch will go through the foam and create that nice look. So um, there's a video on my YouTube. Um, go check it out and it explains in detail how I make my cushions and especially how I oversize foam for longer cushions. So check that out. Here's the supplies that you need. First you start with a good quality foam. Um, density and thickness depends on what your client prefers, but I typically use a medium density um, three to four inches depending on the size of the bench and then I wrap it in Dacron. Next up you'll need hand stitching thread, which is these guys in the middle and a curved needle to make the decorative stitch along the edge. And then the button, nylon button tufting twine and a long needle is how that you will make either the um, X style stitch for the tufting detail, or you can use it to pull your buttons through if you're using buttons. So you can see with my method, you're gonna start out with a really tight looking cushion. If you want yours to look a little squishier or be easier to stitch, add one half inch to my boxing width recommendation. So tip number two is if you're a right-handed person, start stitching from the right to the left. So you wanna go this direction. Um, if, you, if you go the other way, it's just gonna feel really awkward. Another tip would be to add Dacron to the corners. So after you insert the foam, um, just shove a little bit extra Dacron in the corners to fill them out because even though you um, typically for a long cushion, you'll oversize the foam, they still tend to be a little puny in the corners. So um, I would just recommend adding a handful of Dacron, stuffing it in there. To get started with your stitches, you'll wanna measure every two inches and put a pin in. And um, depending on the length of your cushion, you may need to adjust that a little bit for the measurements to work out. Um, but two inches is what I like to go for. So you're using those pins as a guide for your stitch. Come up on one side, go over a quarter inch and back down. And then when you come down on the boxing, you want to make sure that those stitches line up so that you get that nice pull mark um, on your finished cushion. And then when you get a few stitches going, you just sort of squeeze and pull. You don't want to go too far or um, it's really hard to get it to tighten up. So just every, every three or four, scrunch it up. So here it's a, a larger cushion, it's five inches, so I'm able to take a bigger stitch uh, for a bigger roll on the edge. Um, and I'm just using the previous line of stitches um, as my guide, and so I'm eyeballing it. And I would, you know, I would just recommend when you're first starting out, definitely use pins. You can also use pins on the boxing side. And then my last tip would be to start on the back side. So that would be the side that you hand stitched closed or maybe you put in a zipper. Um, that way you're, you get a little practice in and your best stitches are on the finished front side. Um, that always seems to be like the last row of stitches is the best row. Different fabrics will give you different looks. This was a stiffer velvet, so it has a firmer look to it. This was a more typical fabric and I was able to make a bigger edge roll because of the five inch foam. So it was just bigger all around. And then you finish it off with uh, button tufting and you can either use buttons or a stitch detail, uh, any pattern, diamond or square, whatever you would like. I hope that was helpful for those that wanna give it a try. They are a lot of fun to make, even if they are a bit of work.